The, uh, I'm going to talk about some books that have been my Bibles for many, uh, many of my experiences in Asian art. And I started doing uh, Sumi painting uh, when I was a teenager. I sent away for a correspondence course in Sumi painting from Horseshoe, North Carolina, from an Asian artist there in the uh, mountains. Anyway, uh, you do, uh, but, but the, a book that is a classic and that everyone should have that's studying Asian art, that is, that say Asian in the sense of the, the Chinese, Japanese, Korean, the, the Far Eastern art, and the Mustard Seed Garden Manual of Painting is the Chinese Manual of Painting. To understand these kind of diagrams, diagrams of paintings, and the, the Chinese and the Asian sense of space, everything gets larger as it goes back, the opposite of Western perspective. When you understand that, you'll understand why it's very hard for the Asian people and the, and the, and the European-based people to talk to each other. Because once these things getting smaller, it goes back, and the human being being the big, big thing in the front, big portrait in the front, and if those of you that are, you know, know the Mona Lisa very well, you know that's the background that really cr helps create the Mona Lisa. And that's the soft, soft, very, very ethereal mountains in, in the back that brings the portrait up front. That is, that is extremely Western painting. In, in Chinese or Japanese or Korean painting, the mountain in the far back is larger than the mountain in the front. Many times it's up on the front plane. The, the front plane has the most activity. And maybe the back is nothing. Let's look at the, the next book. Okay, the mustard seed is a manual of painting. A manual of painting, in other words, for people who want to paint, like a Chinese painting. The next one is the principles of Chinese painting by George Rowley, and this is from Princeton. And in this, it's a lot of text. And that's one of the things I don't like about the book. But back here, Little house, big mountain. Not the big house and little mountain, the reverse. When you understand that, you understand how small human beings are in relationship to the world. and very subtle, how subtle the earth is. And how abstract. This is about a 500 year old painting and there it is. 
much much of our abstraction that we think of as so innovative and things the Chinese were doing for centuries, Japanese for centuries, and the use of ink in a very loose way. This is a very good book on the techniques because it doesn't fill up with a lot of words, but it, and it's the techniques of Chinese painting. Again, very abstract, very loose. This book is very good at getting up close and finding sections and showing the technique off in terms of sections of the painting and how the brush works. Here's something that's very different that you wouldn't see in Western art. Showing pieces of, of paintings or little sections, ways of painting the, with the textures of rock. Mostly these are the mountains and the rocks in the mountains. And the lines. We would make this, this part's the smallest, that the biggest. So that's again, how much the reverse perspective is in there. Overlapping planes are an important part of, of Chinese and Japanese painting when they're painting rocks, especially the overlapping of the rocks. You could paint, showing here the flowers and the details of flowers, the details of the bark on the tree. And that close-up, close-ups of the, of the subject matter. And a loose way of painting by Western uh, standards in the in the 1700s when they were really first time discovering, quote, discovering these paintings. And then sometimes they get very elaborate like this uh, waterfall and the tree looks like it's upside down, but in the, in the one on the left. Again, very abstract. You'd have a bright color way up at the top in the back. It's okay. It goes back. It doesn't come that far forward. But there's the overlapping is right here. This, without this, the bright blue comes forward. With this, the bright blue stays back. Okay, all these are part of what the, 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 the techniques of Chinese painting. This is the Sumi book. There's a lot of books on Sumi painting. Some of them are very elaborate. Some of them are very simple. I like this one because it's simple and direct for just showing people. And things are how simple a flower can be or a leaf. And I just hung yesterday the, some paintings of flowers in the garden in Mexico and in the uh, where I, over there at the deli across from my house.
the direction of the ink is very important. You're drawing as much as you're painting. You're drawing with the brush. Fish, just a few strokes and you have the fish. And it doesn't mean you're gonna get it right every time because you have to, may have to do it many, many fish before you get the fish. And the fish is the one that is, counts. Again, here's the bugs, and here's showing the, the shades in the, in the brush. Okay, so at the tip of the brush will be the darkest. The lightest will be at the top of the brush where the more, and it's lightest because it has more water up there. It holds more water. You start with this and you go to this and then pretty soon you have a spider. And then you have a web. Or a lizard. Or whatever. A penguin. The important thing is you're drawing with the brush, bamboo. Bamboo is one of the ways that you that you learn how to use goat hair. And I'm gonna show you in a few minutes what goat hair does. This is a problem with a brush. If you push it down, you're making the bamboo stalk. One of the exercises they, get, they would give me when I was in high school in the correspondence course, make bamboo, make bamboo. It was always say that on the, in the whatever, you know, the, Bamboo leaf, bamboo brush strokes. Okay, here we have the stick, which today we're not going to use. We're going to use a, 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 a ink, and that's the ink stick, and that's the grinding stone, and the water is down here. And next week we'll, uh, next time we'll do the inks. And we're going to get into the brushes. Anyway, it's a very handy book. And simple. No 2,000 pages of intricacy of rocks. <laughs>